Okay, I wrote three different talks for today. So I'm kind of messed up. There's this big stack, and then there's handwritten notes, and I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I want to talk about, I'm glad, oh, thank you for the prayer that started this. Thank you. I, I just can't thank you enough. It allows me to just go. You mentioned Ernest Holmes, and my original plan was to actually teach. John likes when I teach. I don't know if anybody else does. <laughs> but I was actually going to teach a little science of mind today. Because in the science of mind, what we lovingly call the textbook, how many of you own this book? Raise your hands. Okay, most of you. If you don't own a book called Science of Mind, and you love what we talk about here, I can't suggest enough that you get a copy and start going through it. And what I did the first time I read it was I just took a highlighter and anything that I believed was true, that resonated with me, I highlighted. That was my first set of highlights. And my original Science of Mind book has like six colors because I have, <laughs> I have a chart as to what the colors were from different classes and things, but I have colors all over it. In the back of the Science of Mind uh, textbook, there is a number of metaphysical charts. And um, I believe Ernest Holmes used these for teaching. And what he taught was that there are three levels. And we start with spirit. And spirit, of course, is divine love, the absolute. I love that term, absolute. He liked it a lot. Um, the absolute is something that is unchanging, that is always steady, always there, always the same, no matter what, no matter who. The absolute. So there's spirit, and then there's soul. And we'll talk about soul. Soul is a creative medium. And again, Ernest Holmes used capital letters and small letters. I think he did believe in a human soul, and I'm not sure if I do or not, Tim. I liked kind of that concept. But with a capital S, soul is this creative medium where my belief is that spirit brings you ideas, thoughts, stuff like that, that we're tuned into. And Rick picks up music, and I pick up, I don't know what I pick up. I pick up all kinds of crazy things, but a lot of thoughts and stuff comes to me, and a lot of science of mind kind of stuff, and spiritual ideas. But we all have things that we are tuned into, that our antenna, I've talked about this before, our antenna are up for certain things because that's what we're interested in. Um, creativity we talked about, Karen, the other night. Um, those kinds of things. You know what you're tuned into and what you get. So your antenna are up, spirit sends you these ideas. And they have to go through this soul section, this creative medium that allows it to come into form. Form or body is the third level. So in order to manifest anything, be it an experience, something physical, a relationship, financial success, whatever it is, in order to manifest these things or create these things in our lives, we have to start with idea. We have to allow it to go through this creative medium and come out. Now our problem is, is what's in this creative medium? Because there's this greater creative medium that just says, God always says, yes. Yes. come on, you can do better than that. God always says, yes. 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 Soul, this creative medium says yes to everything. Not just the good stuff, everything. So all of your beliefs, all of your history, all these subconscious ideas that you have that are swimming around, both in you and in race consciousness, this filters what happens. Because you might get this incredible idea, absolutely incredible. But then you go, oh, I can't do that. I tried that once before, and that didn't work. You might have fear. You might have trauma. All of these things are listed in these metaphysical charts as what we have to filter these grand ideas through. So the whole point of spending time studying and growing spiritually is to clear up some of that stuff. It's pretty muddy water for most of us. And to get clear on what it is we want to create in our lives. 
So soul is a creative medium. I kind of think we do have our own soul, but I, it's just a term. I think of soul as that place where we connect to spirit. I don't think of it as mind or heart. I think of it as something even deeper, something even more pure. And that's what I think of as personal soul. It's just this connection. So then, how do I end up having the experiences I've had this year? I've been doing this for almost 20 years. You'd think I'd be fairly clear and wouldn't have some major catastrophe. Who doesn't know what happened to me in February? <coughs> Lori. Okay, and, and our guest musicians. Okay, very quickly. Um, in February, I got a staph infection. And um, I'm happy to show off the scars if anyone wants to see them. I'm wearing a skirt today. Um, I had six surgeries on my leg during the month of February, um, cleaning out infection. I will tell you, did, did the YouTube that St from Stephen's camera ever get transferred over to our website when I spoke in April? I'm not sure. Okay, most of you weren't here. There were a few people maybe that were here. I'm gonna tell you how this happened. I did it in, in April, but I'm gonna tell you how it happened. I had been told when I was 32 years old that I was borderline gestational diabetic, meaning when I was pregnant, I leaned toward diabetes. Almost, not quite. And so this doctor warned me just to be careful and to watch my blood sugar as I continued on in my life. And, you know, if I were to have more children, which I didn't, um, it was my daughter, my third child, and who's 32, that's how I know how long ago it was. Um, <laughs> So I was told that I, you know, way back in my mind. Now this is ideas we pick up and we carry with us. Some of them aren't real good. So a year ago, almost exactly a year ago, we were at the show that we go to in Chicago. And this lovely man um, who was a doctor in another country did tests that I really like. He did tests like squeezing your earlobes and pushing on your legs and places on you to see if you had any unusual things going on and if you had pain in those areas he could pretty much tell you what was going on and he said you're either diabetic or you're at least pretty close and I said hmm now I've heard this before so I come home I'm I get a um, a little machine that tells me I can test my own blood sugar heaven forbid I go to a doctor I don't like doing that so I get my own machine and I start testing my blood sugar it's perfectly normal you would think that would teach me that, no, this isn't true. The machine says, no, you're fine, your blood sugar's great. But not me. Not me. I still have old stuff in my head that says, no, you have this problem. My iPad is full of diabetic books. You know, how to deal with diabetes. What I'm going to do it with diet. So what kind of diet do I need to do? All this stuff. I have filled my brain with this. And I get a spider bite. And I scratch the spider bite. Now, I don't want to scare anybody, but about one in three of you have, have staph infection that you're carrying around. That's the average in the country. It's so rampant, and it's gone so many places. Now, most of it doesn't show up. So I scratched my leg, and I was probably carrying staph infection. And when I scratched my leg, it created an opening, um, and my leg got infected. And staph, the staph infection is... is you know, flesh eating, and it's my legs started swelling and doing all kinds of crazy things. And I landed in the hospital. Um, I let go of my fear of Western medicine and caved in when I could hardly walk, and I went to the hospital and um, came home a couple of days later. They thought they treated it enough, but they hadn't. I went back to the hospital where I had the course of six surgeries and 18 more days in the hospital. The truth is that if it hadn't been for who I am and what I've been taught and what I have been teaching for all these years, I would probably be in a wheelchair today if alive at all. Because by all that should have happened, he should have taken a look at my leg and amputated it at the hip right then and there. But he didn't. The surgeon did this crazy surgery and put these channels and things all over my leg so that they could suction the infection out. And it worked. And my leg works. So how does this happen? Because I believed that I was diabetic. The very first thing they asked me, the first time I went in the hospital is, are you diabetic? 
And I said, no. I wasn't real firm about that, but I said, no. And they said, oh, she's probably undiagnosed. My leg reacted, the way the bacteria went in and the way it reacted to the infection, to the staph infection, was like a diabetic would react. On my chart, until I think I was a good halfway through the 18-day stretch, the second half, until that good, you know, 12 full days in the hospital at different times. My chart said I was a diabetic, and they were giving me a diabetic diet and all this stuff. And I finally said, you've been testing my blood all these times. Three, four times a day they were testing my blood sugar, and it was perfectly fine. Guess what? I now know. I don't think. I don't believe. I don't anything. I know I am not a diabetic. Woohoo! But I also knew who I was. And, and what I found that was most interesting in the whole situation was that I was still who I am. I'm who you see. I was still a minister. I spent my total of 21 days in the hospital literally ministering to people. I didn't know that's what I was doing. I was just being me. But that's what happened. So I've been promising I'd tell a couple of those stories, so I'm going to do that. The first story I had um, was with a nurse that I will call Carol. It's not her real name. The names have been changed to protect the nurses. Um, Carol uh, came into my room one day, and I guess just conversation in general. I, don't, I was on a lot of pain meds, so I don't remember a lot of it real clearly. But we had this conversation that she picked up on my spirituality. And she made a mention of um, thanking Jesus. And I said, well, I, I really don't use that name. It's not something that I use currently. I have. But I have my own concept of spirituality. And I started to describe to her that what I called it now was pure love. But it was the same energy. It was the same concept. It was the same belief but with a different name. That's all it was, was a name. So we talked for a while about what we believed, and she agreed with the things that I was saying. But then she stopped towards the end, and she said, the only thing I can't figure out is, how do you justify original sin? Jesus is the only one who died for our sins. And I said, oh, honey, that's easy. I said, I don't believe in sin. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> She turned white, <laughs> which was, I mean, she wasn't of, but she turned white. And she kind of shook a little bit. And I said, I believe that at the core of our being, we are perfect, pure, divine love. I said, no, I will tell you that I know we do crappy things to each other. We say things to each other. We do things to each other. Stuff happens. We mess up. But at the core of our being, we are the same love. She left thinking about that. I can tell you, she had that kind of starry look in her face as she kind of stumbled out of my room. And I thought, I guess this is what I'm here to do. And I had magnificent nurses. I had Linda, who, oh, that's her real name. Um, sorry, Linda. I had Linda who stood there while the surgeon, um, you know, I had this wound back on my leg for a long time, suctioning out infection, and eventually they took that out when they thought the infection was gone. And they took this wound back off, and they were just packing several times a day, packing gauze into these huge gashes in my leg. And, and it took a while. And this was the first nurse to witness this. And this surgeon tells me, now you have to pay attention, and you have to see what we're doing. Because you're going to have a lot of people doing this, and you're the only one who knows how this works and what you have to do. And I'm like, what? I can't, I'm laying on my back, because most of it's on the back of my leg, and I can't even see, and I have to pay attention, and I have to know what's going on. I did. I paid attention, because the very next day, or actually later that day, another nurse came in that was going to do this, and I had to tell the nurse how to do it. Nobody else knew how to do it, so I had to do this over and over and over again.